What's up guys and welcome back to Coors Light number three where today we have three, I will say pretty fascinating subjects because today we are talking about did a certain franchise sell their souls? And no, it is not the Los Angeles Clippers. We are also going to be looking at was a certain player not human? And of course, we're going to start with something that we all love to do, completely trash referees. Now, I'm just saying, I think the more that we expose bad calls, the better it is for basketball, right? That is why we are doing this. So diving into these clips, we are going to begin and end with Joey Crawford. And in the middle, we actually have a call that decided an NBA Finals. All right, so right here, we have the Spurs versus Magic. Tim Duncan. Called for a questionable offensive foul. We've all been there. But then on the other end, Tim Duncan, notorious NBA bad boy, says something that I guess Joey Crawford does not like. And it is here where we have one of the most rare moments in NBA history because Joey Crawford ejects Tim Duncan with a second technical foul for laughing. Joey Crawford hates happiness. Let that be known. Now, in terms of the call that could have cost an NBA finals, we're in 1988. Game six, if the Pistons win this, they win the championship. So here, let's just watch this play and just decide together. Is this a foul? The old man goes up and the I don't know about it. Bill Lippier fouls out. Okay, we're watching. And there was the His body foul. moves a bit. And I've got to say, the stakes were incredibly high. Kareem made both free throws here, right? The Lakers then won this game. They won this series. This was Magic Johnson and Kareem's last NBA championship. And if the Pistons had won this, they would have had a three-peat. But jumping back and finishing with Joey Crawford. Watch as Joey Crawford. Right, this man is just out of control. We're in 2005, game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay, okay, okay. Joey Crawford, I guess actually quite literally playing call your own foul. He calls a foul on Chauncey Billups. This, this could have cost the Pistons the game in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Pistons did go on to win this luckily, but I mean, Joe. Come on, moving on to a more friendly topic. We are going to dive into one of the greatest not human performances of all time. And actually, we are going to do a comparison because we are going to begin with Reggie Miller's eight points in nine seconds. And we are going to see was Tracy McGrady's 13 points in 33 seconds more impressive. I've got to say, there's something about old NBA courts that I love. It's Reggie Miller, bang! Pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay. But see now. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Whew. Now that is, that's an incredible sequence. I feel like Reggie does not get enough credit for seriously backpedaling and connecting on that three. Ooh, Ewing, story of his career. Reggie drains them both, steal it from the Knicks. But I feel like in terms of pure impressiveness, we're about to just watch some magic. Houston Rockets down by eight points. But instead, here's T-Mac. Easy. Okay, so importantly here, the Spurs make both. They're not even blowing the game. And there's only 30 seconds on T-Mac. Full court, little dribble package. Oh! But I gotta stop. I understand. I'm not Mike Green. I need a I need an alternate to bang. But bang. This is on Bruce Bo Bruce Bowen and Tim Duncan. At this point, 10 for 27. You know, he wasn't having the best. Hits that one. So here we go. They even run some time off the clock. Duncan makes both. Here we go, Tracy McGrady. Come on. No. <laughs> what did he just do? Amazing angle. Why, why was that so smooth, actually? I didn't say smooth. Regardless, T-Mac for the win. All right, so we all know what is more impressive, right? It's T-Mac. Now, the real question is, when you add in the playoff factor, what's more impressive? But the degree of difficulty of these Tracy McGrady shots and the Rockets were not playing the Knicks. Let me know what you think down below. Before we jump into segment three, guys, I want to say the goal right now on this channel is to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you do not miss Coors Light number four on Saturday. That's all I've got to say. Back to the video. And now 
we get to talk about something that I've been dying to talk about because I think there is a possibility after everything that has been happening with Lonzo Ball and everything, I want to know, did we sell our Did the Chicago Bulls sell something? It could be a soul, it could be anything. It could be a car, a cow. Don't sell cows. Sold something in order to get Michael Jordan. Because I've gotta say, when you look at the bad luck, when you look at the injuries throughout the years, Jay Williams, Derek Rose, Lonzo Ball recently, despite being in one of the largest markets with the most marketable star in the world, let's talk about the fact that they could have had Luka Doncic. By the way, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. We are on basketball reference right here. We are in the 2018 season. You see 65 win Houston Rockets, right? 27 win Sacramento King. But why does this matter, right? Chicago Bulls. 27 wins. Here is where everything goes wrong. Wikipedia is good for things. Don't listen to everything school tells you. It is especially good for looking at NBA draft lotteries, where we see the Chicago Bulls are actually above the Sacramento Kings. But the Sacramento Kings, below the Chicago Bulls, below, got the number two pick. Right there already means that if the Bulls had just won one more game. How much you want to bet they lost their last game of this one, huh? Of course they did. If the Bulls had beat the Pistons, or if the Kings had lost already, the Bulls get the number two pick and they were going to take Luka. They were actually going to pair Luka with Lowry Markkinen. Situation only gets worse. Look at this, 27-27. Those two win totals mean that there is a tie. And NBA tiebreakers are decided by a coin flip. The Chicago Bulls won. The coin flip. They won the coin flip. But that's not how the NBA draft lottery works. All the ping pong balls we have seen, they are numbered and there are 1,001 possible combinations. So you are assigned a set of combinations. That means that while the Bulls ended up with better odds, they still had different combinations than the Kings. So the Kings with worse odds, after beating the 65 win Rockets and losing the coin flip, got the number two pick and didn't even take Luka Doncic. And now we're praising them for making the playoffs. I mean, I'm very happy for you, Sacramento, but I'm just concerned the Bulls are cursed now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, we are on the quest for 10,000 subscribers here. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so we can get to 10K. Other than that, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day. And cue that music. Shaq, let's just say that a uh, snake bit your mom right up here, right in the chest area. Would you be willing to suck the venom out to win the title? No, but I will with your wife. <laughs>